Okay, last but not least, we're going to cover um, the theories of attention. So why do we have dual task interference? Why do we have that dichotic listening issue? Um, why um, why do were we really bad at divided attention tasks? That sort of thing. <clears throat> so one of the big theories is spotlight theory. And it's really very similar to the queuing paradigm we talked about in one of the last modules, where you have um, sort of like a spotlight, like you're a, um, a lighthouse, looking at different areas. So I can focus my attention here. And remember, this is the moving and engaging. I can focus my attention here. Um, so things that are in our spotlight can be enhanced. So we are naming letters that appeared in the visual field. So that's the Posner's queuing task. Um, we are good at discrimination tasks, that sort of thing. <clears throat> and uh, uh, even more support for spotlight theory, we can focus attention on a single object, even if uh, there's something laying on top mm -hmm. of it. So that idea is that we're looking at a spotlight, a particular area. This is really very useful for visual attention. <clears throat> um... <clears throat> And so uh, one problem with spotlight theory is that it's uh, we're assuming that there's like a beam of attention. So like the lighthouse thing. So it moves like this. But um, <clears throat> if things are between spot one and spot two, you would expect people to um, get stuck. Like, oh, there's this thing in the way. What's going on? Pity, Oops, let me back up here, that doesn't happen. So the problem with spotlight theory is that it's like a nice idea, but it's almost like we can turn attention on over here and then ignore everything in the middle and then turn attention on over here. So kind of like a spotlight, but more like a flashlight we're turning on and off. <clears throat> so one of the next big theories is feature integration theory, which has the cute acronym of FIT theory. And this is for visual search. So visual search tasks are where they ask you to look for specific features in your visual field. So find the green T or the red X or other equally boring things to do. <clears throat> um, and so there are a couple of types of searches that they'll ask you to do. There's a disjunctive search or feature search where the target item, so they ask you to look for the green T and then you, um, you um, hit a space when you see it differs from everything else in the field, uh, the distractors, the other crap around you, by one single feature. So it's disjunctive because it's distinct, okay? Um, and so it's easy to find the target because it is distinct from all the other things around them. So finding a circle among squares, very fast. Distractor is all the non-relevant stuff that's supposed to be ignored. Mm -hmm. okay? And then um, there's the conjunctive tasks, where you are trying to combine things, um, and that's a difficult task. So you might be asked to find a um, blue circle among a bunch of other uh, white circles and blue squares. And because we're having to find that combination of just blue and just circle among blue and uh, circular uh, other colors and uh, uh, other types of shapes, it's really hard because you're trying to um, ignore all these irrelevant things, but they have half of the features you need, so it's hard to ignore them. Okay. <clears throat> and so here's an example. Uh, the one on the left, A here, find the circle among the squares. Pretty easy. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Uh, the one here on the right, find the blue circle a little slower. I know it looks like it's easy, but they give you much um, harder versions of this. Um, and because these squares are blue, I have to fight, figure out which blue object is the one I want. And these circles are on here too, so which circle is the one I want. Okay, so it's much harder in the B or conjunctive task. <clears throat> now, if we are looking for um, something that's missing, so to speak. So on the A side, if you're asked to find the Q, it's pretty quick because uh, Q has got that extra feature that makes it fast. On the B side, if we're asked to find the O, it's... Um, other than the fact that it's in the same place, but um, it's much harder because we're looking for something that's missing. Um, <clears throat> so, so um, 
that's participants found spotting the one with the feature of the Q l took less time than the finding the one without the feature of the O among the Qs. So it's not necessarily just the sort of odd man out rule, like this one is distinct because it's different from the rest, it has to be um, different enough from the rest. <clears throat> okay, so a little bit on the brain. Um, not all of this stuff. Uh, so there is a section on uh, uh, TMS, which we talked about before, what you'll read in your book, but I'm not really going to go over it, so that won't be on the um, exam. So let's talk about ERPs, because they're super cool. Um, <clears throat> so what we can do in an ERP, if you can't remember, is we put all the electrodes on your head and we're measuring your um, uh, electroencephalogram. So an ERP is the event-related potential. It's about the second after you show someone something. So I give you a stimulus, and then I measure the wave about a second after that. And I can look at all these different parts. <clears throat> and so the one that they're talking about here is the P100, which is considered the uh, deployment of attention. Um, so we are taking attention and moving it to the thing we're supposed to be looking at. So it takes about 100 milliseconds, that's why the P100. And P means it's a positive wave versus a negative wave. So it's an increase in amplitude rather than a decrease. Um, the uh, second one they're talking about is the P300, also positive, about 300 milliseconds after you see a picture. And that is controlled attention. So the P100 usually is considered uh, automatic attention, it's sort of the quick and dirty version. Um, the P300 is considered controlled attention when I'm actually having to stop and focus on something. Lots of people do research on P300, it's really neat, it's also tied to working memory, which will get covered in the next couple of modules. So P300 is kind of an interesting wave because it does a lot of stuff other than attention. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, just kidding, here's the TMS stuff. Um, so one thing I can do um, <clears throat> is take these ERP studies, and we talked about endogenous and exogenous cues. So endo, remember internal, it's controlled. Um, that's going to be P300. Exogenous cues, external, it's quick, um, it's automatic. That's the P100. And the cool thing about ERP research is that uh, it is the it's good at time. And remember, it doesn't hurt very much, and it's moderately cheap. And so I can measure that down to a, down just to the milliseconds. So that's why 100 milliseconds and 300 milliseconds. Um, and the problem with ERP is space, it's not happening. So you get just sort of a general idea. Okay, it's over here, but you're never sure if it's over here is actually coming from the back of the brain. So nothing good for space. <clears throat> um, so, <clears throat> what we can do is give people um, the this picture <clears throat> here, down at the bottom, and what happens is everything is blue. So we're getting a, a, pic, a section of the brain that controls color, remember that's your um, cones, and then we get the one that's black over here. So this is processed in the uh, the receptive field for um, color, which is cones. And then you've got some that are tied to circles, so up here, and some that are tied to rectangles. So we have some blue rectangles and some blue circles. And then we also have a location cue. Um, and so where the rectangles are, um, so there is, if you look at this picture, there's a rectangle here, that's the blue one, or the black one, and then a rectangle here, that's the blue one. So if I tell you, find the blue rectangle, <clears throat> you have to coordinate color and object, rectangle, and location. So three different parts all together. <clears throat> Which leads us to feature integration theory. <clears throat> Let me go back a slide and talk about feature integration theory. So the idea behind feature integration theory is that we have all these features, blue, black, circle, rectangle, and locations. And what we do is we um, take and put them all together into one big coherent picture. And that really fits with the way the brain works because we have uh, color processing in one area of the brain, uh, feature processing in another, and location processing somewhere else. And so we have all these different um, activations going on at the same time. <clears throat> and so what we do in feature integration theory is we integrate all of those features together. 
So I know there's a blue circle in the bottom left hand corner because all of those activated in the same way. And so there's this master map of where things are supposed to be. That's this location map that um, you see up here at the top right. And that tells me where to combine all those features. <clears throat> so in summation, competition, is it the answer to all of our questions? So why is visual attention bad? Well, there's competition for all these different features, unless there's only one. Why is, um, why are we, do we have a hard time at uh, dual tasks, doing two things at once? Because there's competition. What about the attention blink? That's competition. Change blindness. I'm only focused on one thing, so I'm ignoring all the rest. Um, <clears throat> And so it's really talking about selective attention. So how do we focus on um, focus on one thing over another? So this filtering idea, this bottleneck idea, and um, that was sort of the way we started. And then later they said, well, maybe we're just the reason that attention is so bad is because we don't have that many cognitive resources. So we have this sort of like. Uh, RAM on our system, if you will, for computer, and once you use it, there's nothing else going to happen or you're going to crash. Um, <clears throat> and so attention really now is kind of both. So it's a modulatory influence, which is terrible to say. And so um, basically the idea is that some processes can be done um, together quickly and efficiently, and some processes can't. So it's kind of um, it's kind of like trying to open two really large programs on your computer. So let's say you're trying to open PowerPoint, and uh, what's an equally nasty program? Excel on my computer. It doesn't like me very much. And if you try to open them both at the same time, your computer's like, ah, stop! I can't do that. But if you are trying to open um, a small program, like maybe um, just Notepad and I don't know. Um, Internet Explorer, uh, your computer's like, okay, I can handle both of those. So it, it, attention is sort of modulating what's, what's being focused on and trying to control how much processing you're using. <clears throat> so last little bit on the brain, um, not just the ERP stuff. <clears throat> so <clears throat> um, what the brain does is uh, executive control. So it is controlling where attention is going, and that's mostly in the prefrontal cortex. Okay, remember up here in the front. Um, and so there's really two networks for attention. Where are my little colored slides? Oh goodness, they're on the wrong one. So let's do this. The uh, posterior network is here in the back, hence the post part, um, and that is parietal lobe and occipital lobe. The anterior attention network is here on the front. Um, and that is mostly the executive control component. So where is attention going? <clears throat> okay. All right. So posterior network is in the back. It's the parietal occipital lobe. Just so that it's involved in visual search tasks, which should not surprise you because remember the occipital lobe is vision, the parietal lobe is where. So this is really going to control um, tasks that involve us figuring out where something is. <clears throat> And then the anterior network is in the frontal and temporal lobes. And this one's a little strange. It's the, since it's the control of executive attention, it's really uh, going to be activated when you're forced to focus on one thing over another, which is inhibition of response. So inhibition of response is not, is a um, uh, stop action system. So when your friend says, does this dress make me look fat? And you uh, have to stop yourself from saying, please don't ever ask me that question because yes, it does. Um, okay, I'm kidding. But it's this idea of like, I am keeping myself from doing something in some way. And so it is the, the system in the front that controls either stopping or just directing attention. <clears throat>